So I think one of the most fundamental aspects to our biology, not just our brain, but our body, is our level of alertness or calmness. You know, you hear all this language around parasympathetic nervous system is rest and digest and sympathetic is fight and flight. I like alertness, calmness, because the, the, we can just move away from a bunch, bunch of fancy language. It's there for people if they want to look it up, but it's not necessary. So I think that one of the most important questions that we should all ask ourselves anytime we want to learn or we want to relax or we want to sleep or we're in a, you know, in a situation where we need to receive hard information, whatever it is, is ask ourselves, you know, where are we on this continuum of alertness and, and sleep? So when we're fast asleep, we actually can learn in sleep. We could talk about that if you want. There's some really cool stuff about- Man, that could have saved me a lot yeah. of time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but basically we learn best when we are focused and alert, but not too stressed. And then when we cycle that with periods of deep rest and not just sleep, but when we go into states of, they can be shallow naps, they can, it can be meditation, but really it's going into a state of what um, mo is most easily thought of as wordlessness. Mm -hmm. So I would say as people listen to all the words coming through the airways on this, or they watch this, once they get to a point where they feel like, okay, there's a lot of information, it might be dense, or I just want to consolidate that or get the most out of it. It's fine to just go into a state of wordlessness, pause it, just let your mind drift for a little bit. And then the mind likes to focus back on things. It likes to focus on and off things. And so one way to do that is we can control our level of alertness or calmness really easily. And it's anchored in a really cool medical textbook finding that I think for all the people who are interested in breath work, they'll find this, I hope, interesting. For people that aren't, I think you'll find this useful too, which is that when we inhale, what happens is our diaphragm moves down. That creates more space in our thoracic cavity, in our abdomen, and our heart gets a little bit bigger physically. Blood flows a little bit slower through there because it's bigger. It's just like a bigger pipe. So whatever blood is in there is moving a little slower. And there's some neurons in there called the sinoatrial node. They send a signal to the brain, says, wait, blood's flowing slow. The brain sends a signal right back to the heart and speeds the heart up. Okay, so what that means is anytime we inhale, every inhale we ever take, we're speeding the heart up a little bit. So it's like an accelerator. Mm. So if you want to be more alert, like let's say you feel like you want to be more alert for whatever reason, you can make your inhales longer or more vigorous. So if so I, somebody right now is like, oh man, I'm just kind of sleepy. Maybe I'll listen to this podcast. Maybe I need a coffee. Right. I don't know. Then do 10 prioritizing breaths. the yeah. inhales would be the way to go. Yeah, do 10 breaths that where the inhales are longer than the exhales and you will naturally wake up the, the alertness system of your brain and body. And this is literally a, a, a relationship between the diaphragm, the heart, and the brain, and back again. And the, the opposite is That's also- That's very much like Tumon breathing or the Wim Hof method, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, so he, what he teaches is deep inhale, fully in. Right. That's right. And then just let it fall and out. And then let it fall out. And when people do it like heavy exhales, they're doing they're kind of balancing it in the, the way that wouldn't be like classic Wim Hof or classic Tumon. Right, right, Tumor. right, right. And, Which is a mistake that I think a lot of people make when they're trying to do the Wim Hof is they'll go- Right. Right, you know, because it gives you that high when you right. blow off a lot of air. Does two things. One is you blow off a lot of carbon dioxide, which gives you a greater capacity for long breath holds, which people kind of get into the competitiveness with themselves around breath holds. So Wim Hof or Tumo, right, twenty-five or thirty breaths, like you said, you're supposed to inhale and then let it fall out. If you really push the exhales, then on the breath holds, you can go twice as long because the the impulse to breathe is controlled by a set of neurons that detect carbon dioxide. Mm. So when you exhale a lot, you don't have the same impulse. You can sit for a long time. This is why doing it near water in water is bad. People have died doing it that Shallow way. Shallow water blackout. Shallow water blackout because you don't feel the impulse to breathe. So if the other thing is when you exhale, it's the opposite situation. It's pretty cool when you exhale, the diaphragm moves up in your body, the lungs get, and this whole space kind of gets compact, the heart's smaller, blood moves more quickly. That sends a signal via neurons called the sinoatrial node up to the brain, and the brain sends a signal back really fast to slow the heart down. So this is why inhales make you more alert and exhales slow you down and calm you down. And this is why things like yoga nidra or breathing of the like two in, hold for two, seven out, those will tend to make you sleepy. Mm. And as you fall asleep, you do this naturally. You start to breathe longer and longer on exhale. So for people who have trouble sleeping or for people who right now are feeling a little too keyed up and they want to relax or anytime people want to relax, they should just make their exhales longer 
than their inhales or more vigorous. So you can just go like empty your lungs, like <gasps> just dump air. Mm. And you teach a very specific breath. So this is something for me, I, I lean towards excitability. Mm -hmm. And when I'm trying to, you know, do a podcast, I got it on two X speed and, and I'm trying to do other things while I'm, then I forget what I'm like, the, my tendency is to try and go a million miles an hour. So actually I use some of the breaths that one of the breaths in particular that you started teaching with that, which is two short inhales followed by a long sighing exhale. Right. So the physiological sigh as it's called, and it's called that because it was actually discovered in the thirties by physiologists. This is not breath work. Actually, everything I'm talking about is not breath work. I, what I'm saying is inhaling is like an accelerator on a car. Exhaling is, uh, isn't really like a brake. It's more like coming off the accelerator. And then there is a break, which is the physiological sigh. And the physiological sigh is two inhales, ideally through the nose. So it's inhale. And then you sneak in a little bit of air before you exhale. And that little sneak of air does something really cool. It might feel a little sharp. What it is, is as you get a little overactivated, your lungs are two big bags, but they have millions of little sacks. Like if we were to lay them out, they're about as big as a tennis court, like mm -hmm. a regulation tennis court, huge volume of tissue. And as you get stressed, those sacks collapse. They flatten out like little balloons that are empty. And if you've ever blown up a balloon at a kid's party or an adult party, you are you need to sometimes blow twice. It's the double inhale. What that does is it inflates those sacks so that when you exhale, you dump the maximum amount of carbon dioxide. Yeah, This also works really well. So you can do this anytime you're out and about, you're feeling a little stressed or somebody's talking, you know, like, oh, this is stressful for whatever reason. The double inhale exhale is the fastest way that I'm aware of to just calm down. Yeah, And so it's very useful. You can do it in real time. The other thing is if you're running, like you want to hit steady cadence, like zone two cardio, the double inhale exhale, this is some stuff I'm playing with with some various groups. So not all the data are in, but- a lot of people benefit from doing double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale while they're in steady state cardio because it immediately maps to your heart rate variability. The heart starts going in sync with your breathing. And the other thing it does, which is pretty wild, is that you have a connection called the phrenic nerve that um, controls the diaphragm, the skeletal muscle. But it has another branch, which goes to your liver. And if you've ever been running and you felt like that stitch in your side, sure. you feel like you're cramping, that's not really a cramp. That's actually liver pain. It's called it's called referred pain. And sometimes there's a shoulder pain that goes with it. Mm -hmm. It's usually actually on this side. And that's because all the neurons live in the same segment of the spinal cord. So if you do the double inhale, exhale, when you get that side cramp, it disappears. Cool. And so it's not really a cramp. It's some like a it's a kind of like referred uh, liver pain. So the double inhale, exhale is a very powerful tool, and it's what dogs do right before they go down for sleep. It's what people do when they're in claustrophobic environments. So if you get a bunch of people in a in an elevator, especially nowadays, you know, you're like in a lot of places, you're masked up, you're in the elevator, you're like, and people will immediately, without realizing, they'll start doing this double inhale, exhale to try and dump carbon dioxide. That's uh, this feels like basic human operating information, right? And and I think one of the tragedies of the situation we're in is we aren't taught basic human operating. I mean, this should be kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Okay, kids, you're feeling a little excited? Okay, try this breath. If you're mm -hmm. feeling a little sleepy, try this breath. Let's learn how to work our machinery a little right. bit.